Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to communication skills. So today we are studying that how to make stories by looking at the pictures. This is very important lesson because it helps you in many competitive exams and it develops uh, analytical abilities, creativity, critical thinking and you are uh, being able to judge and concentrate on the pictures with so many diverse results uh, that you can uh, come to by looking at those pictures or deducing so many uh, different scenarios from the same picture. Now the question is that why to use this method? So we use this method in language learning. So language learning is the first important factor that we adopt this method. I mean. Uh, looking at the pictures and developing stories. So looking at this picture, we can uh, come with different uh, words and we can think about so many different options. Now, it says that looking at uh, the pictures and writing a story, you can use the suggestion uh, of the words in the box. Do not forget to give your story a title. So in this way, we are using uh, our language abilities, we are learning a language. For example, if you don't know what is the name of this pot in which there is fish, so you can uh, get to know about it, you can search for it. And if you come to know that this uh, particular object is called aquarium, so that is an addition into your language uh, storage in your mind. Then if you want to think about uh, uh, the plural of fish, then you may come to know that the plural of fish is fish itself if it is uncountable. So if it is countable, then we may call it fishes. So there are so many options that you can learn looking at uh, pictures merely. For example, the words given here are consider fish tank, which is also called aquarium, thoughtful, carry, weekend, sad, river, lonely, swim, cheerful. You can come up with so many other options. Now, uh, if the options are given to you, you can construct your own picture and your own story using these words. For example, it was a weekend and I was feeling bored. I thought that I should do something better. I came to my Living, living room where I came across this fish tank and I was thoughtful of uh, uh, the liberty of the fish so I came up with idea I carried the fish tank and took it to the river nearby because I was thinking that the fish may be feeling lonely and I uh, threw the fish into the river and the fish started swimming in the open water and it was happy and that made me cheerful. So you came up with a different story. You can also go towards different other results of the same story. For example, there was a naughty boy who one, uh, was having nothing to do on the weekend. He saw the fish tank and he made a mischief. He went out with the fish and threw it in the pond. So this is uh, slightly uh, negative ending uh, or the negative character of the boy. So this is how we learn different words, how we think about different words by looking at the same story. Now looking at the picture also develops creative thinking. You can be creative, you can come up with certain different uh, results of the same picture, you can come up with different expressions, you can construct better story beginnings and better story ending. You can even uh, think about a better climax. Now, for any story, we should begin with uh, something very interesting that should captivate the reader, that should captivate the listener. So we, can, we should begin with some creative lines that uh, uh, we had never thought of visiting a haunted house. 
So this can be a very good beginning. You can be creative in a way. Now, looking at the picture, you can be more creative that uh, uh, once I was with my friend and we were um, uh, going somewhere, suddenly it started raining and the rain was too fast that uh, we were searching for a shelter. Suddenly we came across a house and uh, we thought it a blessing of God that uh, uh, it can save us from the heavy rain. We knocked at the door and the old man opened the house who was probably the owner. He directed us and uh, he directed us to sleep anywhere we like. And uh, since it was a cold night, we found a place for ourselves. We sat there and we slept. The next morning when we woke up, we saw that there was no old man, rather there was a skeleton. And it was probably uh, a skeleton of a person who died ages and ages ago. It made us frightened that who was the old man who was sitting in the same sofa. So this can bring up your creative thinking. You can come up with certain more creative ideas. Like you can be creative in a way that uh, a person invited us, we went into the house, we slept. And the next morning we were terrified to see a clown sitting there or it was uh, a hideous clown it was in shape of a ghost but suddenly the old man came us came to us and he started laughing as he made a prank and he wanted to make us uh, terrified so this can be another optional ending so this all depends on our creative thinking that how creative we are another aspect that why should we adopt this method is that uh, it develops positive thinking. Since we've already discussed this picture and we've already gone through the positive and negative conclusions. So uh, you come across such pictures uh, in your competitive exam and there the, this is a kind of psychological test in which they are checking your ability to think in uh, 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 positive way or contrary wise so if you uh, develop a positive aspect of a picture that depicts that you're thinking it is positive but if you come up with negative results which can be creative in a way which is indeed creative thing but that ha uh, ends in uh, your negative thinking so this is what uh, uh, gesture is uh, uh, like given to the person who is reading your story. So we should always have a positive thinking, uh, a positive ending of a picture, positive result of a picture and a positive story. This method is very helpful in developing your critical thinking. So critical thinking uh, demands your research abilities so you should not be focusing on uh, what is shown to you. Rather, you should try to investigate using your critical mind that what could be other possible uh, options which you can get from the picture. For example, if you're looking at this picture, you can see that uh, a woman is frightened and she's about to scream when she uh, finds a person dead along with the staircase. So here you can come up with certain ideas. Apparently it seems that uh, uh, husband uh, has died since he fell down from the staircase and wife was about to shout. She is stunned. She was basically busy in cooking something because we can find kitchen uh, and, uh, and we can make out that this, hus this should be her husband since he was uh, in his uh, nightgown. But we can come up with certain more ideas at the same time. That the colors of the coats show that uh, this may not be a night count. And uh, the person is also wearing shoes. And the girl, if we uh, are thinking that she was cooking in the kitchen because we can see the steam and flames. But again, if we look at the dress of the woman, we come to know that uh, she is ready for some party. So. 
we can have so many critical judgments. The person may be a thief or else we can make out that uh, uh, the girl herself uh, uh, made a trap to kill her husband. There can be so many different options. All we need is to adopt our critical thinking. This is also possible that uh, the person was going up when he fell down and this is also an option when, that he was coming down when he fell down and died. Or it is also an option that he is not dead at all, he is just posing. Or it is also uh, acceptable that he is not dead, he is only unconscious. So we can get so many views by looking at the same picture. That is why it is said that we should always look at the other side of the picture. So this is not only about some picture, this is also about living a life. That while living a life, we should look at the both sides of the picture. Like, let me tell you a story here. That uh, once in a train, there were certain uh, children. They were making noise. And the father, he was reading something and he seemed sad. Uh, his kids were uh, creating a lot of noise and they were disturbing the whole train. So, a passenger sitting over there, he asked the person... But what kind of a father you are? You're not controlling your children. You're not uh, giving them proper training. He said that uh, I don't know how to train them at this very moment because we're just coming from hospital where their mother died. So this changed the perspective of thinking of the person, of the passenger who questioned. So this is how we can develop critical thinking that we should not aim or approach at something with our uh, con own conclusion, we should try to think and look at the different sides of the same picture. Now this thing also invites our concentration level. We look at so many things but we never concentrate. Some days, sometimes when you are going to your university, uh, suddenly you look at a building which is newly constructed and you start thinking that we uh, didn't even pay attention to it that this was being constructed. So this is uh, what our uh, concentration is that we are not looking at the things. Now if you look at the picture, this may be our train compartment, this may be uh, an aisle of an aeroplane where air hostess or the train hostess or the road hostess, she's presenting some uh, uh, edibles to the passengers. Now one passenger, he is sitting uh, uh, very relaxed and uh, one passenger is about to receive his uh, goods to eat. In the next passenger we find that uh, the, uh, the passenger sitting ahead he is yawning and he wants to sleep and in the third picture we see that he is finding the handles to stretch the chair and uh, to lie there and in fourth picture we see that while stretching he comes back and his chair breaks and uh, uh, like uh, disrupts everything of the passenger sitting at his back. It also uh, breaks the bottle, glasses, it uh, like smashes the food and uh, everything is in disorder. So this is the concentration. You can come up with certain more points by looking at the same picture. You can be positive, you can be negative we can have any conclusion we want using our positive and negative thinking, using our concentration ability, using our creative ideas. Now, this is how we make a story or how we start making a story. So what is necessary to make a story by looking at the picture is look at all the pictures and describe them exactly. So when you, uh, such question comes to your examination, so what you need to do is you need to be looking at the pictures individually one by one and you should be able to state what is happening in that. So uh, let's try this on this picture. Uh, we'll try to elaborate uh, all these 10 pictures here. So in the first picture what do you see? Uh, we see a woman 
who is intending to go somewhere but before that she is looking at the weather since it is necessary for her to go she is thinking and planning that how should i step outside the house in such uh, a terrible weather so in picture 2 we see that she is preparing herself she is wearing her overcoat since it seems cold outside the picture 3 states that it might also be snowy because she is wearing her long shoes picture 4 states that uh, she is not expecting the rain to stop so she is having her umbrella and in picture 5 we find her going outside her house she is locking the door and when she comes out in picture 6 she is having a uh, terrible storm there she is facing the stormy winds and in picture 7 she is trying to adjust her umbrella because that is the only way to protect herself from the rain. Picture 8 states that uh, she is barely able to save herself from the rain because it is all over. And uh, picture 9 states that since it was uh, terrible weather outside, so uh, she could not get hold on her umbrella. And picture 10 finally states that uh, her umbrella was twisted on the other side and she is now getting wet with the rain and she is unable to control her umbrella. Now her all, all her plans are devastated and she is all uh, like uh, drenched in the water. So this is by uh, this is what we get by looking at all the pictures. So now when we are done with looking at the pictures we can give any twist to the story that can be anything like a woman wanted to go out she did not have her umbrella she stole the umbrella of her roommate and uh, since she stole it the result was this that God punished him and the umbrella was twisted and she was wet so you can come up with certain more conclusions the thing is this that we should be focusing on each and every picture by concentrating on them. Now look at this picture. Try to tell the gist, a plot of the story in one in one sentence. Like uh, we when whenever we are looking at the pictures, when we are done with the pictures, for example, if I refer to the last picture where a woman wanted to go out uh, in the heavy rain, we should sum that uh, in one sentence so what could be the one sentence for that picture so the plausible sentence for that picture can be that uh, uh, we should take care of the weather or news report or weather report before uh, going outside so this can be something about that or uh, we can give some other uh, sentences to the same picture that uh, uh, always uh, uh, like uh, save something for the rainy days so it is the best thing that if you have something for the rainy days you don't need to go out now rainy days here is uh, like uh, it is an idiom but here it fits or befits very well it is to save something for the hard times so here since it was raining so she must have she must be having something at her house that she did not have to go out in such a weather now looking at this picture since uh, we need to know the gist of it we need to know the plot of it so we can see that uh, uh, there are certain people and this may be a train station in some town because we can see the word town over there and we can see that it is quarter past seven the time is quarter past seven there are certain people there are uh, there are families there are people uh, going on the train there are uh, some people who are selling something uh, there is a person who is selling fruit and a person is ready to uh, get uh, a bird on the train so when he gets in he uh, goes to his compartment and uh, there another person is peeping through the window or the pane of uh, the door and he also steps in in the same compartment where that gentleman was sitting now we can see uh, that he's a gentleman from his hat from his briefcase from his uh, dressing from his demeanor so we can make out that he must be a kind and respectable fellow 
Then we find the other person who came in, who just came in the same compartment. So he was probably following him. Because in the first picture, we can see that the same person was following that gentleman. So when he came and sat in the same compartment, we see that uh, the person, he sat in front of him and he started smoking. So smoking and smoking inside the train, that is also not a very good idea. So this makes us believe that the person should not be having very good uh, company. So man is known by the company he keeps. In the third picture, we see that uh, he goes out and uh, he takes the overcoat of the gentleman. So this is surprising. And here we come to know that the person came to get the overcoat. He was not a passenger. He was just a thief who came to steal the overcoat of the gentleman. So this is how we can reach certain conclusions by looking at the picture. You can come up with certain more ideas. There could be so many other possibilities. If you're not having this title with us, remember, if the title is something else, then we can come up with certain more things. So since we know that uh, we have to give the gist of uh, the same story in uh, one sentence, so this is we should be careful of our, about, our, uh, about our belongings when we are traveling. In other way, we can also suggest that the person may not be a thief if the title is not the same. He may be uh, another very respectable person who is traveling in the train and he by mistake took the overcoat of the gentleman. So this is a plausible reasoning. So we should come up with certain different ideas by looking at the same picture. Now this is really very funny pick and I hope you will be uh, learning it and <laughs> enjoying it. So it says that we should take notes on each picture. Observe most of the individual's characters of the situation. So in this picture altogether, we have uh, two main characters and uh, two or three uh, minor characters as well. So we should observe everything and we should ob observe the situation. So if we look at the first picture, now what do you get out of it? So by looking at the first picture, we can see that this is definitely not a suicide case. Now, how do I come to know that? that I and definitely you too, we can come to know about this thing that she's not lying there uh, for her suicide attempt because she is tied. So her hands are tied, her feet are tied, her throat is tied uh, to the railway line. And a person is running, a black shadow is running out somewhere. So he may be the culprit who tied the woman. We also find a person walking somewhere in the picture one. And he is looking at the woman. He spots the woman tied with the railway line. So he comes there and unties her. The woman is relieved. So she is happy that she is uh, saved. In picture three, since he was her savior, so they're happy together. They sit together, they spend time with each other and they're having a candlelight dinner. And this shows that now they're in love with each other. Picture four states that now they are before the priest and they are getting married to each other. And this is uh, uh, the result of uh, the person saving the girl. And in picture five, we see that uh, the same thing is happening, which happens after the married life, that uh, they ended up in bow. The woman is trying to dominate. She is trying to be uh, like uh, she's trying to pose her rules. The husband is uh, like he's smoking and he was uh, doing something in his life. Yeah. But uh, like uh, uh, he's not uh, accepting the attitude of his wife, uh, which is uh, quite dominating and domineering. So he is, we can see at the expression of the person that he is getting or he's uh, getting uh, fed up of all this situation. So what does he do is that he carries the woman and he goes to the same railway track 
and he ties the woman at the same position. Now, this is not uh, about being feminist or anti-feminist. This is only a picture. We can give it certain more conclusions or certain more endings. Now, the point is that we should observe most of the individuals that what they're doing, how they're doing, what is their role and what is happening in response to what they do. So we see that uh, the woman is tied and maybe it was not the criminal who tied her. It may be her former husband who was sick of her and he tied her and uh, the same thing happened to her again when her second husband. So it can be anything. We can uh, with come up with feminist view that uh, some male chauvinistic person tied the woman somewhere, a person saved her, but again he was feeling uh, uh, suffering from his male chauvinism and he uh, uh, showing his cruel aspect of his nature. He tied the poor woman again on the railway track. So there is uh, nothing about being feminist or anti-feminist. This was a humorous picture by the way. So we should look at the picture, we should observe observe the picture and uh, the individuals, the characters, that what they're doing in each situation. Now, start telling the story, picture by picture. Now, when you are done with everything, when you know that uh, you have seen everything, you have understood uh, everything, and you can get to know all the positive and negative endings. So, this is the time when you, sh you should start writing the picture, uh, the story, but picture by picture. So looking at this picture, we can see that an old woman, she was uh, knitting some stockings uh, uh, by sitting out in the garden. When a cat came, who may be her pet cat or who may be a stray cat, she started playing with the wool or with the thread that, she, that the woman brought with her for knitting. And uh, since it was slope, so the, the thread ball that started moving and uh, the cat uh, like uh, and eventually it ended and the cat was uh, surprised at where the ball is gone but it is just untied it is almost open so there's no more ball there so we can start making uh, a story picture by picture by looking at all the things by being creative by being critical by observing each and every object, each and every character, each and every situation. Now when we are writing, we should be using descriptive words for all the things we come across or we focus. For example, we can state this picture in very simple words like uh, two rams, they were looking at each other and there was only one way to go like uh, only one ram could cross the bridge so bridge was quite weak both of them started fighting eventually they fell off the bridge so this is one way the other way is like being descriptive about all the things the weather was quite fine and uh, like uh, a cool breeze was blowing when two rams two fierce looking rams with pointed horns on their head. They uh, met each other on a bridge where only one uh, of them could cross the bridge at one time. There was uh, a cold water streaming downwards and uh, both of them started looking at each other and then they uttered fierce noises from their uh, the mouths uh, started uh, uttering fierce, fierce sounds and then with uh, the height, at the height of their anger, they ran towards each other and just like two fierce bulls, they attacked each other and smashed their heads against each other and then uh, in the same fight, both of them fell down into the cold splashing water with the huge noise of the splash sound. So it was that neither of them could pass the bridge and ego of uh, uh, both the animals 
resulted in the downfall. So, I have used descriptive words narrating the same story. So, first I used simple words, now I use descriptive words, so you can see the difference. Now, when you are listening to my voice and looking at this slide, just look at the picture 3, where you can see a, uh, a swan sitting. So, do not look at the picture 1 or 2. Now, look at picture 3 and try to make out what do you see. Is there uh, like a pair of snake that you see or uh, is there something else that is moving? So, this is like we should be paying concentration and looking very closely at the pictures. Now, come to the picture 1. We see that uh, a boy, he went to swim and he hung his coat and his pant on the plants and he put his socks on the ground and he uh, might have dived in the water. Now he is swimming there. Meanwhile, we see that uh, uh, two frogs came there and they entered into the pair of socks and they started jumping because uh, they could not pull themselves out. So, in the result of it, the socks started uh, jumping and they were just looking like uh, a pair of snake. So, when the boy looked at the socks, he started screaming and uh, it horrified the swan too that he was peaceful sitting but he was too, uh, he was also afraid by looking at the sight. So, this is uh, that we should be looking closely. We can see two toads or frogs sitting on a rock in the first picture who jumped in the second picture in the, into the socks and in the third picture they started jumping and it uh, presented the view as if uh, it is a pair of snakes. So, this is that we should be looking very closely to the picture just by looking at, looking at picture 3. You cannot make out what is happening. Spend time observing the given situation sketch without jumping straight into write, writing the story. Have a clear vision of what has to be written by framing the story. So, if you are having a picture in front of you, do not jump uh, to writing about it, just think about the situation. Look at the thing critically. Bring your creative abilities. Look at all the characters, uh, like uh, focus on all the events, focus on all the things around, focus on the people and then frame the story. For example, in this we see that a person was going somewhere in picture A and in picture B uh, he fell down but uh, uh, he was uh, not uh, taken care of by the people though people were standing there. In picture C we see uh, that he is uh, alone and in picture D he uh, finds the person and he calls him for help but uh, in picture E that person runs away, he is not coming down. And uh, in picture uh, F, we see that uh, uh, he calls for a person and uh, in G, we see that even that person goes away. But in picture H, we see that a person, a good uh, hearted person comes. He calls someone to the ambulance probably and he's uh, carried by uh, like uh, the ambulance uh, team and he's taken to the hospital. This is that uh, we are observing the picture and we can make out. We can give some other turn which is the real uh, intention of the uh, person who sketched the picture that in picture B, they were not the people who were not taking care of him, they were rather criminals who took all the money uh, from the person, even his jacket and threw him out in a wounded condition. So, uh, no one was coming to him. Uh, since it was a police case. So, this is that we can give certain better opinion about the same picture. So, we should not directly look at the picture and start writing. We should first clear ourselves by looking at all the minute details of the picture and then it comes the time to write about it. Now, take time. Just take time and uh, think about all the things that are happening in the picture. We find three people, we find uh, one thinking, one looking at uh, beehive and one looking at uh, the footprints of some animal and that may be a terrifying animal, most probably a bear. So, we can construct our story about it, that 
how to think about it, how to write a story about it. Maybe the bear came back and the person, he hit uh, a stone on the beehive, the beehive fell on the bear. The bee started biting the bear, the bear ran away and the, these people saved themselves. You can come up with certain more ideas by looking at the pictures. You should then observe the activities, what they're doing. Look at the picture minutely and try to see what is the uh, activity that is performed by the character or the characters. The most important thing is to notice the mood of the character. It is very important thing in framing the story. We can see very loving mood of the couple in the beginning and we can see very angry mood of the same couple in picture 5 and 6. So this also tells us that it was not some happy moment in which the person went to the railway track and tied his woman again. Now, mind the age and gender of the characters. Whenever you're reading a story or writing a story or looking at the pictures, we should be careful about uh, the genders so we can make out that there are uh, two females and one male in the picture. The male is uh, a young boy and there is one woman, adult woman and one young girl. So they are playing with each other and they are uh, disturbing uh, the colors, they are smashing water on each other. So they are uh, like being mischievous. So we should be careful about their age and the uh, characteristics that they have according to their age. We should also look at the surroundings. For example, if we find some TV, some book, uh, books there, like we can find so many items in this picture that can help us. There is a, a flower pot, there is a mirror, there is a candle stand. There are two candle stands basically and uh, uh, there is a chandelier, there are three uh, uh, three pots over there, something is being cooked and there is an electric oven or steam oven maybe, there's a carpet. So we can take help of these things in constructing the story. Most children have a natural and creative streak but anyone who has tried it knows getting an idea out of your head and onto a piece of paper can be very challenging. Spark the children's imagination by providing them a picture on which to base their story. So this is a very good activity if you perform it with your kids or with the kids at home that uh, you should give them a picture and try to sense their uh, creative thinking that what do they make out of the story? How do they become creative in uh, writing a story? They have some natural streak in them. You just need to polish their skills and they will be able to present some creative and very good ideas of the same story that even you may not have thought about. Once you have gone through all the minute details about the characters, their expressions and their number, their gender and uh, all the things that are noticeable, then it comes the time to write it. Write a rough draft, use lined paper to print a rough draft of your story or write uh, manually uh, with your own hands a rough draft of your story that what do you get of the picture then add it to yourself set your rough draft aside for at least a day then read uh, through your story for the plot development the beginning of it the middle of it the end character development setting juicy words like descriptive words that I used grammar spelling punctuation during self-edit, it is best to read your story through editing for a different component each time. In other words, do not try to fix your plot development and your spelling at the same time. Focus on each aspect at, the, at one time and then come to the next aspect. Then pair edit is the second thing. Have one of your classmates read through, through your story, providing comments and corrections. Or someone of your age, your brother, your sister, show them the story and get their comments about them and then come to the expert at it. Show it to your teacher or your parent and then get their comments and corrections and then your story will be in good format and in good form and in proper sequence. When you're done with all these things, this is time for you to print it or this is time for you 
to rewrite it with a nice handwriting. Last three steps can be ignored if you are writing the story in some examination. Like for example, if you are appearing in ISSB or in FPSC or PPSC examinations. So there you cannot help the, you cannot get the peer help or the expert help. There you need to do all those things on your own. You need to focus on it, you need to revise, you need to revise it, you need to review it and you need to look at uh, the spellings in one uh, study, in one reading and then in the other reading you need to look at uh, the plot development, the character development. So you have to do all these things on your own when you are sitting in examination. So these are the references that I have used in making of this lecture. You can find plenty of more material online and in the books too. But this uh, material that I selected, inshallah, that will suffice. Thank you very much for your considerable time. Stay tuned. Allah Hafiz.